Welcome, everybody, back to the Spinner Rack. I'm here once again with the crew, Petey, Prime Minister, Kyle, Superstar himself, and, of course, Mars. Hey, everybody. We're talking about Wonder Woman 84, our take on a new video, the, the new trailer that showed up. Selector, please play. Ready, set. I don't want to be like anyone. I want to be an apex predator. What did you do? My life hasn't been what you probably think it has. We all have our struggles. Have you ever been in love? A long, long time ago. You? So many times. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Definitely an 80 feel. The future. Life is good, but it can be better. Well, why shouldn't it be? Malls and spandex. You're supposed to be Gilbert Godfrey. Not Gilbert Godfrey. Uh, Pedro Pascal, the Mandalorian. Okay. No, 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 no. The DC character from uh, Golden Godfrey. Mm. Chris Pine is back. I take my blood in return. Everyone will see. That lasso action scene is off the chain. Nothing good is born from lies. The greatness is not what you think. It's just a trash can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris Pine. Wait, wait, that said June 2020. Oh, so they're going to reverse it then. Okay, I like some of the stuff I'm seeing. Well, they're clearly developing the character, uh, Kristen Wiig character, into her cheetah format. So that's basically what they, they, they basically dropped now. And, um, I mean, which is going to be an important thing. We have two main villains in the show, or at least... I think there's two main villains from the little they've shown us. We know they've been talking about Cheetah for the long part of this time, and so it's going to definitely be the Kristen um, Wiig character. And when we see her, her and um, Wonder Woman, Diana, what's her last name? Diana, not Diana Ross, Diana. <laughs> Diana Prince. Diana Prince, that they have some type of working relationship together. So, you know, the reason, what, what happens, what causes her, uh, the two to, 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 to become a rift. Could it be on, on her part that she's jealous of Diana or is um, something, some particular event happened and she wants more power? Who knows? And then we, of course, see the Pedro Pascal character. We said um, the Godfrey, Golden, Godfrey, that, Golden no, Tree. I thought that was like Golden Godfrey, Golden but Godfrey. I believe that should be... Uh, is Godfrey from the New Gods? Yeah, I, I'm thinking oh. that'll be, what's his name now? Uh... Maxwell Lord? He's supposed to be a part of the movie? If I'm correct. Yeah, Maxwell Lord. That's right. But Max but Maxwell Lord isn't a blonde. So when I saw the guy on television, the first thing that jumps to my mind is Glorious mm -hmm. Godfrey. Hmm. Probably it's a it's a it's a it's a setup, you know. Probably this is just a false persona and then he comes out later. It's a possibility. Maybe. No, no not with Maxwell Lord and uh, uh Glorious Godfrey. Do you remember his name in uh, Legends, Petey? It's Glorious Godfrey. It, no, no. What was the name of the? He was, he was an anchor on TV in Legends, and I think his name was Ch Ch Godfrey. Was still part of it, but I think they changed it a bit. In Legends, uh, let me. 
Yeah, John Byrne, Legends. I know, I know the thing. I'm just saying. Man, I'm Clark looking it up. As a, what's the name? Yeah, he was this anchor, and he was, you know, like one of these, you know, he was doing like the anchors, you know, like uh, like off of Fox News or something, like whipping the people up. He's more like a pundit or a political figure. Yeah. So they're saying that uh, Maxwell Lord will Pedro Pascal will play Maxwell Lord in the movie. Oh, that's what you got. Okay, let's pose as TV preacher G. Gordon Godfrey. Yeah, G. Gordon God. Yeah, Gordon Godfrey is what I was no. thinking. Right, but he's going to be portraying Maxwell Lord in um, Pedro Pascal in the Wonder Woman report. So, look, the question is: Do you still think you're still interested in watching this one? I yes. think there's a strong there's a strong interest, of course, because you know Wonder Woman. It made a billion bucks last time. You know, That's- it was one of the most successful DC films of the year. Um, and in the DCU, one of the biggest ones um, outside of the Batman um, franchise. So I think, yeah, I think we definitely want to see it. We want to see this take on it. You know, a strong female superhero. Something Marvel had took several days, several years to come up with, with Captain oh, Marvel. Stop I think it. they did it yet. Did Marvel make a, a, success, Captain, a, a powerful, a powerful female character yet? I don't Captain think Marvel. That a, Who? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that, but that's another that's another show. And then we got to get into the weeds with Brie Larson, and we got to watch her on the. Uh, she was hosting that show with Jamie Fox. It, that's a long that's a long discussion. There's a lot of stuff to think about. But that being said, aside of what Mars is saying about the money, which I'm, you never fail to amaze me how you can always make this about the money somehow. Anyway, I'm I wasn't that interested in the first Wonder Woman, and I didn't think the first one. I thought the first Wonder Woman was mediocre, to be quite honest. Okay, I know that would be the, the minority opinion, and if you said it, you're going to get labeled sexist, blah blah blah. But this, I'm actually interested in because the scenes that I've seen and the development that I'm seeing in terms of character characterization, those little touches I I, know, I noted with Steve Trevor being the one out of time as opposed to Wonder Woman, the you know the aspect that I'm seeing. Well, Kirsten Wig I think is a good choice for the cheetah because Kirsten Wick can play either one. She can really play like the homely and then she can look a little bit more dolled and glammed up. She's never going to look like a, you know, like a, a like a 10 or something of that in terms of Bo Derek, but you can definitely see some transformation with her in terms of character. So I thought she was a, a physical character that is. So I thought that was a good, you know, a good choice there. But you know, uh, the action sequences, what I'm seeing in terms of the little, the little tidbits and glimpses in terms of the writing, uh, selection in terms of the people who are going to be representing these roles and i think gal Gadot has gotten better in terms of her overall acting so yeah i'm looking forward to this i'm want to see it Kitty, i'm there you know it looks like it's going to be interesting um otherwise yeah i mean it, since it's sort of I don't know. It feels like and maybe I didn't see that full one with like uh, stuff with the the Amazon. I don't remember it, but ultimately it's the trailer that really holds you and pulls you in. You know, the only thing I have issue with is that I've said it before. I wasn't really a fan of the the Hawkman Alex Ross um, outfit. It's not as busy as the Perez one, but I like the Perez one. So um, ultimately, uh, something more towards the Perez one might have been better for me, or what they already had as far as armor in the first movie would have been good. But I mean, every, you know, people, a lot of people fan of that, um, Alex Ross's stuff. So they, I guess that's what you got to give it to. And then you have, you know, uh, what I. Hmm? Sorry, explains what you're saying. Okay. No, the only thing else I was saying that they had, oh, they also, she also wore it in, what is it? Our, our world's at war. So it's like something that had some sort of thing in the present day. So, so I had that a, stem from, um, I was, the, I always thought that was a presence thing. He came out, it was the first time she actually had the armor, and then they just, I guess it just hawk, evolves from there. But not the hawk, hmm? the hawk outfit, like the sort of like in, in the outfit. Yeah, I know. That's, we see, that's we see that, that in Kingdom like. Come, but we see that in Kingdom Come. But I remember, I have these, uh, I'd have to look at it again, but in King, like in the deluxe versions, Alex Ross has like, you know, the pages and the designs and some write up. And I think he, I think he says he took that from Perez's design and just extrapolated on it. Mm-hmm. I understand if you like uh, Perez's design better, but you know, he was nothing, just coming, he, he was pretty much just doing that. 
you know, he, he, he said, it's one of those things where he said something and did the other thing. Because it's <laughs> like totally gold. <laughs> like, it's because like you got Hawkman over there looking like Hawk God. And then you have Wonder Woman that has the Hawk outfit. It's just like, oh, like she's the, 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 the old Falcon. <laughs> it did bug me. I don't know. So Mars. here's a question. Here's a question that I had. So, uh, the reboot of Wonder Woman was what in '87, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not '84. So, and I don't think that um, it was let's say '87, '88. And Alex Ross, Kingdom Come was what '95, '96. Okay. So how? Okay. So they're taking elements from future because uh, this is '84, Wonder Woman '84. Right, mm-hmm. and they're taking elements of those stories that are in the future, and they're putting them into their into there, and they they won't be able to go back to them. That's what I'm trying to say. So if they wanted to do a Kingdom Come using this particular type of Wonder Woman, it's not going to happen. If they want to do like the War of the Gods, way the Perez run, they're not going to be able to do. Well, I guess they probably could, but they have to change it up considerably relative to what's going on there. Because of the outfit, just well, I'm just saying. Okay, I guess so. You trying to say that everything and trying to say this, this stuff aligning with what happened in the past or something like that? I know they just mix everything up, and that's yeah. what I, that's what always throws me off sometimes. The mixing up of all this type of stuff, you know, it's um, it's just damn. You want to keep the stories, you know, the stories and the outfits and the powers aligned to 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 those particular things. Because of course, when they redo, if they ever do Kingdom Come as a as a movie, which they should. Um, it's going to be, yeah, they should. Well, Which you're they out. Should. No. You're out for all of that is to remember that Kingdom Come is an alternative timeline. Mm, so, in an alternative time, in an alternative timeline, mm. you can wear whatever outfit you want, and you can make whatever changes and tweaks that you want. If you know that ever comes to play, I don't see that happening anytime in the near future because the DC universe is such a mess. Number one, and number two, that's something where if they really wanted to attempt it and square how well they could do they should have done that with the animation and they they're, they're terrified of doing those bigger stories with the animation they would rather do you know they, they'd rather do red sun superman than say do crisis and you can literally do crisis in parts you know like part one through four or something of that nature but it's too big of a story and they won't attempt it and kingdom come is equally a big story but it's self-contained relative to something like crisis you know crisis is is sprawling all over no, you know, King, Kingdom. Kingdom Come is a huge, it's a huge story. There's a large amount of history. There's all this stuff going on in it. I mean, there's a there's a simple enough story to follow, but there's all this stuff going on. And that you, there's a lot going on right over there where this one of those comics you can revisit two, three, four times, and then your eyebrow perk up and like, oh, I didn't even realize of this, or I didn't understand, I didn't realize this was going on. It's not that, I mean, it may be simpler than Crisis, definitely is simpler than crisis okay but it's still something that you know it's still something it's been there for decades now they haven't tried it they've done death of superman twice and they haven't tried this once <laughs> interesting for me i'm so i struggle with um with those sort of big stories trying to be translated into you know into other mediums I mean, possibly if you did a long form cartoon thing you could try those things but I would, I mean, even Alex Ross, he's saying ultimately the plan was kind of getting into the DC heroes versus the characters that the image guys kind of were creating. Because I think, um, like, who's it? Um, um, Gog or, or Magog is kind of a mixture of an yeah. old Batman villain, but it has cable when you pull the mask off his cable underneath there so it's like but he said he didn't get to go as far as he wanted to because he wanted to push in sort of more styles get into some of the stuff and it's like where would you fit any of that like where would you get to try to do the life feel sort of stuff you just pack the page with characters and i think that's said enough and he's like saying there's still an element of trying to get that sort of storytelling I think what you what, you want another t- another eight issues to do that so <laughs> it's Cable and Youngblood, <laughs> and all and all the mess that those guys would create. No, I mean, uh, 
I mean, well, this is still taken away from uh, Wonder Woman 1984. But yeah, I mean, we shouldn't have to worry about uh, her wearing this particular outfit and what they can do in the future. Kingdom Come is its own storyline. This is its own storyline. And they're going to do what they normally do. They're going to borrow whatever parts they like and can make work. Uh, much as like what they did with the Marvel movies. Because, you know, they, they held on to enough of a story from the originals that... I don't guess, I guess people couldn't be too upset. And then the Marvel films were so successful that even if they did decide, well, we're just gonna, you know, circumvent all this stuff, people just went with it because it was going on with the story that they had created for the, uh, the cinematic universe that they had. So this right here, I mean, look, it looks good. I'm interested. I'm, I don't want this to be another one where I said, you know what, I, I got my expectations up and then when it was time to look at it, like, man, that really sucks. So I'm hoping it's not that. I'm really hoping that's not what comes to pass. But as of right now, yeah, I'm interested. I like what I'm being shown. I think the care is there and I'm looking forward to it. Now, where are we going to see it? That's a different question. Yeah, that I agree. You know, hey, at the rate they're going, it may show up on HBO Max, <laughs> you know. As at the rate to, they're uh, going, it'll show up in a high school. You know, so we'll see about that right there. Yeah. So just, just show it in a high school. We can't open the movie theaters. We can pack people other places. So just show it in a high school. <laughs> they need to. They need to make money, man. So they need to pay back these debts. These films, but it's over two hundred million dollars. You know, you're not going to get that back by showing it in a high school or, or even put it on HBO Max. I was so being. I was being sarcastic. Yeah. Just want to make sure. I was being sarcastic. All right. All right. We, we got it. Well, one of the brother got got our resume. So yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. They've had this resume for how long now? <laughs> it's been updated, yeah, damn it, for the pandemic. Okay, all right. Look, if you just did what I said, we would have been on already. <laughs> <laughs> right now. 